Hello, I'm Michael. I'm Radek. And this is The Podcast. A sounding board for interesting ideas and insights. We discuss books we read and want to share with you. As well as technology and productivity, which is what we do by day, working on our app, Nosby. Or whatever else comes to mind. Exactly. And we meet again. Yes. Yay. Person. Yeah. It's, uh, it looks like we'll, we'll beat our previous records. It was usually like three times a year, twice yeah. at, at the Nesby reunion and then once more in like... WWDC? Yeah, like at WWDC. Yeah, but th- this time we are, uh, we're already at, possibly at four times, man. Yeah. So it's a lot of love hugging, you know, uh, like and four times a year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially that we live like 3,000 kilometers apart. So, uh, yeah. Is it 3,000? Yeah, something like that. Huh, that's further away than I would have thought. Yes, uh, but like yet again, we are here. Yeah. So, so we take like this is the best part. Again, as at our no office company, we take any possibility we can to just see each other, even just for a brief moment, because yeah. today is just going to be just have a couple of hours, uh, and, and yet we do it. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for coming. Yeah, you happen to be around close, just a few hundred and not thousand kilometers from me, and exactly had some uh, other things I I could do and. In, uh, in Gdansk and, and around, uh, so yeah. Yeah, so there we are. And we are um, actually in my parents' apartment. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, and the, the office next to it is gonna be our new headquarters of Nosby. Who, and the only person who will be working there will be my father, who's our accountant. That's right. All right. So this is the this is like now now everybody knows on the internet the deep secrets of Nosby. So <laughs> let's move with the uh, with the episode. Yeah, and let's talk about the deep secrets of productivity. Yes. So we're going to dive deep today. Uh, mm-hmm. Deep work again. Yes, that's right. So we've been talking about deep work, just like almost in every other episode, mm-hmm. right? And the, the the importance of deep work. Yeah. Deep deep work meaning. Deep work meaning uh, the sort of work where uh, you are at your highest state of focus and attention, what a lot of people call flow, Uh, the sort of work that's creative generally in nature, uh, that's pushing your boundaries, Uh, that's not something organizational, not a meeting, nothing like that, but really you being truly deep at your best work. Yeah, and um, depending on what you do, it's it's like you know some people um, can allow themselves like you know, no should optimize for lots of deep work. Some mm-hmm. people um, cannot because they have to be responsive. They have to like attend to stuff. Mm-hmm. But yet, but still, like if we want to really uh, work on our best, like our best level at our best level, we should try to optimize for deep work for as much as we can and for as much as our position or our role in the company, in the team, allows us, right? Yeah, but it's it's really much more difficult than it seems. Uh, because for 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 me, uh, in theory, I, I'm a programmer, I write code, and I should strive to, you know, for 100% of deep work. <laughs> right. But first of all, that, that's not possible. That's not possible. Sometimes you just have to have... You would just burn out. <laughs> yeah, you, you'd burn out, but also, like, there, there's there's meetings and not just like the the bad kind of meetings, but sometimes you just have to talk some stuff through with other people or take care of like maintenance stuff, which is not going to be deep work, but it has to be done nonetheless. Uh, but it's also even if you decide that you want to do as much time as possible during deep work because that is your best work, it's really difficult just on a personal level to actually do that. Yeah, exactly. This is the the thing what which we already discussed in the previous epi- one of the previous episodes that I was um, that in in my circumstance, like I'm optimizing. For me, a good week is a is a week where I work thirty hours. Yeah, but really to work thirty hours, not I am my my butt is in the office thirty hours, but I'm really I'm really working thirty hours, right? Like yeah. thirty billable hours, I would call them, right? Um, so it's not like I, I want to slack off, but I want to like make sure that f- at, this is like the bare minimum I want to achieve every week. And for me, I divide them into tens. So I need 10 hours of deep work, 10 hours of meetings, and 10 hours of shallow work. Because as the CEO of the company, I have lots of shallow, shallow work. Like, you know, I have to send a wire transfer. I have to, like, you know, check if the, you know, balances or things like that. And this is not deep work. This is like, you know, just going through some paperwork or whatever. But this 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 is this belongs to my job description. And 
I and I like this job anyway. Anyhow, so I, I want to do this th these things, but for me to have the, the balance or to, to work on the balance, I would I, I want to have 10, 10, 10. Um, of course, the meetings is the same thing. I, we try to minimize meetings at NOSB. We talked about it in the previous shows. Uh, we, talk, we talked about the meeting that you attend, so the, the design find meeting, the scrum meetings. So my kind of meetings also with my direct report. But then again, for me, this 10 hour rule is also for me not to get excessive, like not mm -hmm. to have like a week where I'm just constantly in meetings, right? Because then I know that, you know, the other thing will suffer. So, so I'm actually monitoring and, 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 and um, uh, trying to, 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 you know, to write down how many hours of which kind of work I, I've done over the week. And really, um, so, so for me, this kind of balance is, is what I aim at. But as with everything, you know, I have good weeks and bad weeks. I have weeks where I have like, you know, 20 hours of meetings and, and, and 10 hours of, uh, of shallow work and none of the deep work. And, and, but then sometimes I have weeks where I have like, you know, 15 hours of deep work for some reason. So, um, so today I, I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about, you know, how to optimize to have more than, than less yes. of these. So, um Listeners of, of this show know that a couple of months ago uh, we've discussed this and, and that was sort of an earlier iteration of, of, of this episode. I had a few ideas of how I started structuring the way I plan my week, my, plan my whole week so that yeah. I get more of that. And I thought, yeah, this is, this is good stuff. But, but since then, those ideas have evolved and I, I noticed more, more things. So I, I want to really uh, okay. dive deep into it because... Um, in one of the very early episodes of, of the podcast, like two years ago, uh, we we discussed how I, I did this experiment where I tracked quite precisely what I do throughout the whole week. And yeah. it turned out that it's like less than 30% was like real work and, and not necessarily even what I would call deep work. And there was nothing really surprised. Well, there was nothing really unusual about it, but it was surprising nonetheless. Like we don't realize how little yeah. really we work at work. Uh, these days, I on on good weeks, I can push 50, 60% of deep work. Mm -hmm. And that took some time just figuring out on a personal level how to structure all my stuff, how to plan so that it's even possible. Mm -hmm. I remember one of the past episodes, you mentioned, for example, how you plan your, your, your tasks for next day, mm -hmm. like which comes first and things like that, right? Yeah, so... So first of all, uh, that that's the first step. Actually, planning uh, planning the whole week, but planning uh, you know every week during my week review, I would plan uh, tasks for the whole week so that I can optimize for deep work. Because day to day, we often don't have the the, the big picture, yeah. and we sometimes forget and we get sucked into something that's not necessarily the best use of, of our time. Uh, now, of course. In planning, the most important thing is planning and not the plan itself. It, it evolves over the week, but, but having the, the first sort of draft of a plan for the whole week is very useful. Uh, and I plan each day in a very specific way. And that comes from an observation that if I just pick some... Well, if I start the day from something that's shallow, yeah, the day is not going to go well because it's like, waking up and starting your day by browsing Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I know I did that in the past and it really, it doesn't do me favors on a psychological level because I start my day in this mindset, in this mode of my brain that I'm, I'm distracted. I'm looking at, I'm traversing all, you know, vast amounts of data and not actually focusing really deeply on, on a specific thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you want to start the day from deep work. But what I realized is that it's not even as simple as that because you can take something that is deep work, you know, some really difficult, you know, really good little project to mm -hmm. do. Uh, that would be challenging, that would be creative and, and all those things. But because it's hard, because it's a difficult sort of task, if I try to start the day with that, I would often fail. I would completely fail because I've just woken up like 30 minutes ago. Yeah. I, I barely ate breakfast. I'm still sort of feeling sleepy a little bit. I'm not yet sort of spun up to full speed. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm trying to do like some uh, like research kind of task or something really hard. And I'm trying and I, I just can't focus. And so I naturally just wander off to do those 
shallow things because it's easier because I, I feel like I'm making progress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what I figured out is that I have to, I, I, I schedule every day during the week, um, you know, I, I schedule the whole week uh, such that every day I have a plan for the first task and the main task. Uh huh. Okay. So the first task is a task where I know the first few steps. Okay. Okay. Because if you if you schedule something where you can name this task, you know, but often it's something like something uh, vague, like research something, where the task is figuring out how, how to do something. Yeah. You, you sit down and you don't know what to do, or mm-hmm. it's really really hard. So the first task has to be something where you've already sort of mapped out in your mind the first three, four small steps, mm-hmm. like the, the first sort of 15 minutes of, of your work, you know exactly what to do. You just have to do it, right? Okay. And the first task, uh, you know, it, it can be a, a typical uh, shallow task, like, you know, opening Slack and, and talking to some people. That's bad. It, it has to be something where you actually get to focus, but it can't be too hard. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. It, it just has to be, you know, focused work, but not something too hard, and I, you know the exact first few steps. So, for example, like in your case, as a programmer, it would be like what? Like, a, like an easy, like a function, something like yeah. that, that, that you m- m- know more or less what to, what to write there. You just, you just haven't gotten to, around to writing it yet. Yeah, or what often happens is that uh, during uh, work on something more difficult, I notice that, hey, I could improve... I could improve this a little bit by, you know, restructuring a little bit this code, re- uh, yeah, refactoring okay. it. And I have this in mind, and I don't do it immediately. I just put it down in Nosby, and so that I know that during the weekly review, I will schedule it for next week. And it's a simple sort of 30 to 45 minute task, mm-hmm. and I know exactly how to do it. I just didn't didn't do it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so the, the the first task for the day is this like 30 to 45 minute task where it's not too difficult. I get to focus. It, it's focused work, and I know the first few steps. But do you do you like do you put do you put these tasks like when you do the weekly review? Do you you know choose these tasks and you know mark them with some kind of category or put them in a in a in a project or how do you how do you how do you prepare them for for next week like so so that you have this pool of tasks to choose from? Okay, so uh, I I do two things. Um, during the week review, as I move things around in Nosby, mm-hmm. uh, so in our in our task manager for those of you who are new to the show, exactly. Um, I I have two uh, two categories. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them is called first, and the other one is called main. Well, it's called frog, but that's uh, yeah, that, that, that's a historical artifact. Okay, uh, and so I I mark them in. Um, you know, I mark the, the task with, with those categories. And then uh, the first thing I, I do during the day when I sit down at the computer is I open those B, I open the priority list, and I change the filter to first. Okay. And I only get one task. All right. Right? Uh, and then after I'm done with that, I change the filter to, to uh, frog, so to main. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I only see the one or two big sort of stones for uh, for the day and not all of the other things that are scheduled or someone delegated to me. Okay. Okay, I get it. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. it's very good. So, and, and, and also like during the week when you find a new task and you candidate for the first, what do you do? What I, what I do is when I see, oh, it's probably something I should do next week, mm-hmm. I just schedule it for Monday. And then ah. on Friday when I do my weekly review and I review all the, all the projects, Right, mm-hmm. and then at the end, when I, I get to make the plan for the week, I open Nosby in the calendar view mm-hmm. for for my week. The calendar is always filtered so that I, so that I only see my tasks, and then I move things around from Monday to other days. Ah, okay, okay. So put them in Monday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I also do is I I put sort of like a a big level overview of of my week in in another format. You know, using my automation with Bear. So I, uh-huh. I just have like I can open on my iPhone just by essentially two taps, uh, a note with checkboxes for like the big level plan for the whole week mm-hmm. uh, outside of Nosby. But in Nosby, those are also, um, you know, marked. Okay. So okay. I, I do this first in Nosby and then I, I put it only for, you know, so that I, I can look at the big picture mm-hmm. view of the week, not just work, but outside of work as well. Okay. I find that useful. So, so that's the first task. Okay, mm-hmm. that's the first task of the day. And then I got the main task. And the main task is not always the. Uh, so it's sometimes it's the, the same one, but very often it isn't. So the main task is something that can be really hard. 
mm-hmm. not Oasis, but but something that's like true deep work, something yeah. that's I, I'm you know 100 focused, no distractions, no slack, no nothing. Mm-hmm. I just focus on my best work, and uh, very often you know sometimes it's something where you know I I know how to do it more or less. It's just going to take a day, uh, but sometimes it's like a really hard kind of task, like a research style of task, you know, figure out how to do something or mm-hmm. research this or, um, you know, th- th- that sort of things. Like, 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 the other, like the other day we were talking about the speed optimizations, for example, yeah, for the yeah, app, yeah. you said that you had to do some additional research to make sure that yeah. how you can optimize the speed of the app or some aspects of the app, right? So these kind of things. Yeah, uh, that's th- th- these kind of things. And, and that's the main task. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the main task can sometimes be um, really, really hard. And so th- that's the point with the first task. So sometimes I have a task that I know will take me the whole day mm-hmm. and it's not super hard or I, at least I know the first you know five steps that will take me about an hour yeah. of this task that are not super hard and I know the first ta- uh, mm-hmm. you know few steps. In this case, there's just one task. There's one main task for the day and nothing else. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's marked both first and, and main. Yeah, and that's what I do. But the, the point here of, of this uh, distinction is that if I have something that I plan for for the day that is really really hard, I will plan a first task first, right? Okay, yeah. So that I, I have something that's my best true deep work, but I I have something you know a minor task that will take me just before thir- that. Yeah, thirty to forty five minutes to sort to give me time to sort of spin up so that... So you, will, you so even if, if you have one big task for the whole day, this is one thing, you want to do just one thing, you still do this additional first task just to yeah. warm up, basically. Yeah, exactly. And so so that's the interesting thing because when when you're in this in this frame of mind that you want to optimize for deep work, you want to do as much deep work as, as possible, yeah. it's because like you want to do your best work. And so you also probably want to schedule these these most important tasks mm-hmm. uh, with this frame of mind that if you have some you know big project that you're working on, you want to take tasks that are on the critical path, right? Yeah. The, the tasks that, you know, doing this um, clears up all sorts of other tasks so that the project can move forward. Mm-hmm. And so the main task I I schedule with with this frame of mind that I take the the most important for me and for the team uh, tasks that are where I can uniquely uh, contribute using my, my my skills and my my knowledge to do my best work. That's mm-hmm. that's on the critical path. And the but the first task is not like that. Like, see, uh, that, that's the whole point that if, that you do this first task, even though it's something, you know, less less deep, mm-hmm. but it, you optimize it for your personal productivity. Uh-huh. Because so what that you schedule something that's the best possible task you can do if you're not actually going to do it because it, it turns out that it's really hard. You're going to, pro- you're going to procrastinate and everything. Exactly, mm-hmm. you you'll feel super bad, mm-hmm. and so uh, that's why when I notice when I you know during work I often notice notice those little things that I I could do. I, that's why I don't do them immediately. I I, I make a task, and mm-hmm. I uh, and usually those are things that I could explain in two words and delegate to someone else. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't do that on, on purpose because I, I want to have I want to always have a small stash of these first tasks <laughs> that I know that, that you know when when I see it I know this is a perfect task for me to warm up and spin up for for the day. And after I, I do that, I'll be. You know, I'm already sort of focused, I'm productive, but I serve something simpler and I can get to something deeper. Okay, so, yeah, so basically, yeah. So basically, again, you're collecting these small tasks, the, uh, small, these smaller tasks, mm-hmm. uh, first tasks, and like, ah, oh, there's the first task here, right there. Oh, yeah. There's the first task right there. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. So th- that, that's the most important thing, but I got a whole lot more, okay? Yeah. Keep going, man. <laughs> so uh, again, like I mentioned, I plan the whole w- the whole week with this in mind, the first and main task, and I, I put it for for every day. Uh, but then uh, also I, I refine I refine every day. So at the end of, of of the day, actually not quite at the end of the day, but during the the day, I will plan the next day, mm-hmm. and I I plan the next day, you know, based on the plan I already have, 
Uh, but also refine, given the, the fact that I know that something t- took more time or less time or something new popped up and the priorities have to change a little bit and, and that's okay. Uh, but I already, you know, I refine the plan for the rest of the week. So I don't just plan tomorrow, but I, I look at my little note and my tasks in Nosby mm-hmm. in the calendar and I move them around so that I, I always have the plan for the rest of, of the week sort of sketched out in my mind so that I know that when I wake up, I know exactly what to do and I, I don't have to wonder uh, what I'm going to do today. Yeah, the thing is, the thing that I want to highlight here uh, for everyone to really you know, take notice, I mean, we've been talking about this already, but it's so important. Like, I remember when I was first trying to, 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 to learn to wake up earlier, the problem that I had was that I would wake up early, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what to do. I would, mm-hmm. I would, but my mind would still not be woken up completely. So, so I would be like, you know, completely, you know, almost blind, I would say. And then I would, it would took me like an hour to figure out what to do. So why would I, you know, wake up earlier if I didn't need an hour to figure out what to do? Like, doesn't yeah. make any sense. So, um, so this, this, this pre, you know, pre figuring out, like pre planning is so important that you wake up and you know exactly what to do. And like, I really like this. Like, I have to, I have to steal your idea from this first, first tasks because, um, it sounds it's it, it sounds uh, from what you're saying that it it works uh, and it sounds really reasonable of course uh, uh, and and this is what I'm struggling sometimes I'm I'm, I'm really str- very often putting off important tasks because I'm not warmed up yet or for example because one of my first tasks is a meeting and then with my, one of my first tasks is a meeting like as you said I'm already in this different mindset mm-hmm. and this is not a, a deep you know, go dive deep, deep now mindset. It's like go uh, float uh, <laughs> mindset, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And what I also do is um, when, I, when I plan the whole week, I also plan uh, a small sort of grab bag of tasks. Uh huh. They're not scheduled for a specific day, but they're just like, I, I sort of pre select a, a few tasks that I. I could do, and I, I'll get back to, to it later why this can be useful, mm-hmm. right? So you stash the firsts and you stash the maybes. Yeah, exactly. All right, uh, next, uh, what I do is I, I, I'm getting quite strict about having absolute uh, focus for the first part of the day. Uh-huh. So um, uh, in the development team, we have a short like 10, 15 minute meeting at 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. Um, and before that, I usually wake up at 8 and start work at 8 30. Okay. So for the first one and a half hours, absolute focus. You know, when I sit down at the computer, I, uh, my Mac usually, you know, I'm traveling now, but normally it's essentially a desktop. Mm-hmm. I, I don't close all the uh, apps at the end of the, the day, you know, that I use for, for work. They're just there. And when I sit down, I just change the filter in, in Nosby in priority to see the, the first task. And I do that. I don't, I don't. Um, also, keep uh, in um, on my Mac uh, the 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 Nosby window shallow, uh, uh-huh. not, not shallow, but uh, narrow, so that I don't see in the sidebar the counter of the uh, uh, of the of new the comments. New comments. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I don't check new comments in Nosby. I don't open Slack. I I don't check email. None of that until 10 a.m. Okay. I just filter the priority and I do that. And then later, when when uh, there's the, uh, sc- the the scrum meeting at, at 10 a.m., I open Slack and uh, Nosby just for you know two minutes uh, to check if there's someone uh, who wants my my attention directly. So yeah. I I don't check the the, the new comments. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just I just check if someone mentioned me. If someone yeah. mentioned me, I'll read it, and I uh, might might say that it's urgent and reply or stash it for later in the day, but I, I just check if someone needs my uh, my attention. And then uh, Slack, the same thing. I just check if someone mentioned me. If not, I don't check the rest. And I continue with my deep work. The The point here is that, you know, if, if someone r- really did want my attention, that they mentioned me, if I only replied at 1 p.m., they, they would absolutely hate me. And yeah. so just spending two minutes to check if there's something and replying or not, depending if it's actually urgent, uh, you know that that makes it so that uh, people rarely complain that I I I, um, I ignore them during my my deep work, but I also don't get distracted by it. You know, yeah, yeah. I very rarely get distracted by it. 
Mm-hmm. All right. And, uh, as, you, as you mentioned already in previous shows, uh, one of the previous shows, that you actually have Slack uh, and notifications off. So, yes. so, so, so you don't see the notification. That's why you consciously at 10 a.m. go there to see if there is, there is some activity that, that, that needs your attention, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't have Slack on any, uh, well, I, I don't have Slack notifications, badges, nothing on any devices, and it's actually fine. No one. Um, it was never a problem. I, I thought this is unthinkable, right? What if someone wants my attention and mentions me? It's fine. Uh, All right. like, p- people don't 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 need me often enough, and and if if they did, they can I message me, and of course no one does, so it's fine. I do. Uh, <laughs> yes, you you do. Um, and then I I continue with my with my deep work with my first and main tasks after the the scrum meeting until uh, twelve thirty. Mm-hmm. So twelve thirty is is the is the half point of of the day, right? Okay. When I start eight thirty, twelve thirty is yeah, the mid- middle of, of okay. the day, mm-hmm. and I do deep work until twelve thirty, and not later. Uh huh. And the 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 point of that, like th- this is counterintuitive, but because often I felt like if I'm having a really good day, I'm really productive. Let's uh, keep going. Uh, let's keep going. Here's the problem with that, people want to ask you a bunch of stuff and you have all sorts of other shallow tasks. I often have like code reviews to do and, and such that I have to do anyway. Right. Right. The, 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 the fact that I ignore them today doesn't mean they go away. No. <laughs> and they, right. they take more time than, than, I, than I think. Like yeah. ignore, ignoring some of the, those tasks makes, you know, the, the fact that, that people expect that you, you don't want to, to do, uh, you know, reply to, to them immediately uh, means that there's a little bit less of them, but there's stuff ju- that just has to be done that's shallow work. And it's going to take me, you know, two or three hours in a day anyway, on, on almost any day. And if I ignore them today and continue with my deep work, I might have a super productive day today, but tomorrow I have twice as, as much shallow work to do. It won't okay. just disappear. There's just going to be twice as much, which means that I'll almost surely do very little deep work tomorrow, which means I'll feel sort of bad that I, have, I feel unproductive today. I have all this shallow work mm-hmm. and then that sort of destroys my uh, my productivity maybe even for the next day because I feel like my, my whole week was sort of broken and it, it doesn't uh, doesn't go as well. It, it's a little like um, like stoicism. Where the the, the the idea of of stoicism, well, one of the ideas I'm simplifying, but yes. <laughs> uh, is is that you you don't experience these emotional highs as as much as you know as 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 hedonist as a yeah. hedonist would do, but also don't ex- experience these emotional lows. Like if you're as, as uh, if you're acting uh, stoically, like you're you're sort of in this optimal in this you know good state but not mm. the best possible state but we're in a good state mm. consistently and that you know uh, people who are sto- stoics find that for them it, it, that's much better to 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 be con- cons- to consistently feel good right well, isn't it boring you know you should be up and low and up and low <laughs> Uh, well, as, as far as productivity goes, not, not for me. If, exactly. if I'm super proactive one day and then super unproductive the next day, I feel horrible. Yes, it, you're right. It's, it's much better to be very productive, but not super productive every single day if possible. And and sort of smooth out the highs and, and the lows that I could do more deep work today. I could be more productive today, but it means tomorrow would be terrible. Okay. It's not worth it. So at 12.30, you stop being I, deep. You, you I, st- yeah. Stop the deep dive. Even if I could uh, keep going, I stop mm-hmm. and I, I, I check what, what's on my plate because usually by 12.30, there's something new that popped up, maybe some um, some pull requests that need my code review or something like that. Okay. And if I, if I um, decide, if I look through it, you know, th- that's the time, 12.30, where I see what's new on Slack, what's actually new on Slack, what's in new comments and what tasks I have for me and what code reviews I need to do. Okay. Uh, if I uh, see that I have almost nothing, which sometimes happens, then I'll continue until maybe one thirty. Okay. Uh, but but on on most days, like two thirds of, of 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 the cases, it's like okay, you know, it's, it's a good idea that I stop deep work because I prefer to get all of that done today, right? Mm-hmm. And then this way I can stay consistently productive every day, even though. I keep my deep work to four hours uh, a day. Okay, so there is no problem. I mean, you, you, okay. So then you, you will find the the the, the, the shallow work, right? Yeah, 
Even if, but if, if, if there is no, nothing on your plate. Well, th then I'll continue working, but that, that, that never actually happens. Okay. There's always something. Um, mostly because, like for me, mostly because of, of code reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I have to check other people's work. Yeah, this is what we do in Nosby. Like, so, the, so if somebody submit, commits code, like submits new code and, uh, or has like worked on something, they, do the, they ask for code review so that somebody else with fresh eyes, fresh perspective has to look at their code and see if what they built makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's basically that, that's basically it. That's uh, sort of an important practice in any serious de development uh, yeah. team. Yeah, we we don't want to like we don't want to be shipping code that you know just one person saw and they thought it was fine and that's it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like this always happens. You know, m mistakes uh, slip through, and when there's a fresh set of eyes, that happens much less often. So that's good. Yeah, in, 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 in our marketing on in our marketing part, we do the same with, with any article we write or write on the blog post or whatever. Like whatever we do, there is somebody else who will review it. So mm -hmm. there is no, 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 there's no way for us to just type it just and hit publish. Like it's yeah. the same thing. Okay. All right, let's keep going. So uh, at 1 to 2 p.m. max and, and you know, uh, preferably immediately after I, I sleep, stop, stop my, my deep work, I plan tomorrow. Ah. So, so this, is, this is something I, I, I found recently that I would, uh, sort of my last task for the day, my last sort of shallow task for the day would be to plan tomorrow. Yeah. Which makes sense because you're, you're done with the work so you know exactly what's done and what's not done, right? Ah. But the problem with that is that... Oh, I see so many problems there. <laughs> yeah, the, the, there's, um, there's just one, this, you know, this next little thing here to do, this other thing here to, to do. And so I often, you know, even though I want to finish work at, at 4.30, I wouldn't because I haven't planned tomorrow. And if I don't plan tomorrow, I, I know that that's, that's a bad idea. I got to plan tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I just find something else that I can do. And then I overwork and then I feel bad uh, because I feel overworked and it's not good. And if I plan tomorrow at 1, 2 p.m. max, then tomorrow is already planned. So when, when it's um, 4.30... Like I, I know that everything after that is sort of bonus. Okay. I've already done my deep work. I've already planned tomorrow. That's the most important work. I I'll stay at work for a couple of more hours, a couple of more hours. I'll do some more shallow work that's that has to get done. But it's all that's all additional stuff. So when the clock says four thirty, I'm like, okay, like I, I can close the, the lid on my laptop and I can go. Like it's it's done. Right. Ah. There, there's no, there's no one last thing that has to get done. So at the end of the day, I will sort of refine if necessary, but already know the, the basics, right? I, I don't know if some of the like code reviews or something has to get done tomorrow because I haven't managed to do it today, but already know that either I finish or, or haven't finished my, my deep work task, my, my first and main task. So I already know what to plan as the first and main task for tomorrow. So I can already plan tomorrow and then just refine, you know, change one or, or, or two items at the end of the, the day. But I, I don't have to, you know, even though it takes just, you know, five minutes, it's, it takes some thinking to, to figure out what's, what's a good plan for tomorrow. So doing it early makes a big difference. Yeah, so I mean, it makes perfect sense. Like you've done the, the deep work, you've done the most important things, you have responded to most of the urgent issues, mm -hmm. and you can, you're already to, to plan the next it's really cool and you plan next 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 day so the plan is done as, as well so like there is like this emotional pressure or the stress is no longer there exactly like you you can already say I ha i've had a good good uh, uh, good day's work exactly and then everything else as i said is is additional it's bonus although you know of course it, it belongs to the hours that you that you need to to spend in, in at work but but it's 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 lighter right yeah exactly the, the, i don't feel any pressure after that mm -hmm. because it's it's just it's just you know, regular work. It, yeah. it's, it's not, it's not my mission critical stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, I'm at work yeah. and I, I do stuff that, that people expect me to do, but it's like, I, I don't, th th there's, there's no pressure on, on myself. And so, you know, th th that's for me is, is important, you know, don't overwork yourself. 4.30, out, you know, work can wait. And, you know, this, uh, this often cascades when I, I feel like I'm unproductive, and I and and then I, uh, for various reasons, I I stay at work un until later. I don't, 
keep track of the time. I, I, I haven't noticed that it's late and I should finish work. And then I, I, there's guilt and, and, and shame and, and tomorrow before, because I overworked and I, that's tiring and I haven't, um, taken full advantage of, of my afternoon and evening. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is probably going to be less productive and it's just, it's, it's, it's bad. Like don't, don't do it. You know, 1630 out. Um, if I start work at 8.30. If I start later, I'll finish later, but still. And sometimes I'll, you know, like go for a run in the middle of the day or something, then also finish work later. Um, but but again, it, it's useful when I, I have all of the most important stuff done and I have planned for tomorrow. Then if I want to leave for a run and you it know, makes perfect sense, then. do some uh, work in the evening, that's fine. But, you know, eight hours, that's it. Uh, next up... Um, manage your energy levels. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's also something I, I noticed that sometimes I feel unproductive, sometimes I am unproductive because I don't eat properly. Mm-hmm. And the, the thing is that uh, my, my body often doesn't send me the right signals. Like I very rarely actually feel hungry so I, I I have the tendency to either not eat enough, even though I, I, I need the energy, I need the glucose for my brain to be working properly, mm-hmm. uh, or other times I'm, you know, binging on, uh, on sugar. Uh, so I, I have to keep that in, in mind that, you know, uh, I ate breakfast before work, but I, I need to do, you know, I need to eat something at 11 or 12 b- because even even though my body won't tell me you're hungry, my body will just tell me I feel tired. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is this is so true. I mean, the the as we discussed here, how 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 to get fat and how how no, how we get fat. Uh, so we discussed on this show the diet thing, and we are dieting, and we are acknowledged as dieting experts on the <laughs> internet um, uh, because of our track record uh, um, and our infinite wisdom. So the thing is uh, that when I switched to eating every three hours, yeah. I wouldn't suffer that energy problem. Mm. Like my body would be constantly nourished and, and then it would just turn to this clockwork. And then like um, at, uh, every time at, like at nine, uh, before nine, I would eat my breakfast. At 12, like, like sharp, like mm-hmm. at noon, my body would ask me for some food, for some little food. Um, and then at three again and at six a.m. again, and that's it. And I remember I, I vividly when I started switching to this, I, I stopped having these problems. So next up, and I'll, I'll keep going fast because we don't have much time. Uh, there are times where um, you're at work and you just, you feel bad. You feel overwhelmed. You, your brain some, sometimes just feels like mush. Yes, it, it does. Uh, in, in, in that case, uh, my, my tendency, my neural tendency is to like try to push through. Yeah. That's a bad idea. Uh, what I found, if, if my brain feels like mush, do not continue. It makes no sense. Yeah. You won't do anything. You'll just feel super bad about yourself. You'll be there staring at the screen and yeah. you'll be just there staring at the screen. Yeah, and like th- there's there's no sense. You're you're not helping yourself. You're not helping your employer. Or you're not helping anyone. It must, doesn't make sense. So in in that case, you need rest. If your brain feels like mush, go out for a walk. Mm-hmm. That, that's what what I found. Uh, like I, in that case, you really need rest. Uh, continue to work makes no sense. You need rest and then get back to work. And also, what's really important. Lying down with a laptop uh, to chill and you know maybe. Uh, I don't know, browse internet or, or watch Netflix, that's not real rest. Go out for a walk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is not rest. This is uh, just a recipe for disaster. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, next tip, do not drink coffee. Do not ever drink coffee after 4 p.m. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I wake up at 8, so if you're waking up uh, earlier, adjust. Uh, I, I tend to only have one cup of coffee around 10, 11, but definitely do not ever drink coffee after 4 p.m. It's a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, we just had our cup of coffee, but it was right before 4, so yeah, we're so, good. So we're good. Um, next up, if you if you took on a really hard project, like you plan to do this, this really hard thing, and it's it's not going well, you, you try, but you just can't figure it out today. Like there are some tasks that you can only do when you're at your 100%, you know, mm-hmm. something that's at the edge of your capability. And, and not every day is like that. Like you, you, and sometimes you just can't force it. So if you took on a really hard project and it's not going, drop it, 
get back to it tomorrow. Again, it doesn't make sense. So sometimes like some tasks are like that, that you just, you can do it or you can't. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, at this, uh, at my work, I often find like some, sometimes some things are really hard to figure out. Uh, and, and this is where this grab bag of tasks comes in. Okay. That you have like backup tasks that are good tasks that are, deep work but not your best possible work Uh so if you tried you tried to you know do a really hard task today you've gone for half an hour an hour and you know it's it's not going well don't try to to push on don't get distracted with shallow work drop it get back to it tomorrow do another task okay so this is where you it's like your fallback yeah that's my fallback but but is this stash similar to the first tasks? No, it's it's different because the, the first tasks are, are short tasks, like okay. 30, 45 minutes. And, and and those are often, you know, more more difficult that I know will take me, you know, half a day or, or something, but um, are just, you know, the, 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 they're not like first tasks, that they're really short. Okay, so they're, they're, they can be a little bit longer, but they're not that difficult. Yeah, so the, they're the, not, mm-hmm, yeah okay. exactly. Um, one problem that, that I have, you know, still have, still haven't 100% figured it out, uh, are those like research type tasks. Yes. Where, where the mm. point of the task is to figure out something because by definition it's vague. It, it's not actionable, not directly. You, you don't, you don't you know. You never know when it's done. You, yeah. it, like it's hard to figure out yeah, when it's done. Mm-hmm. So the best idea I have it so far is um, before you actually schedule it, on, on a day where you're, you're, productive where you've already spun up you, you've done some deep work but it's it's early relatively mm-hmm. early you have time spend an hour or so one one and a half hours um to 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 start tackling this research that type task you know when you're already ah. spun up when you're in the right mood to work on something like that and don't just continue with it just do it for one hour to figure out the first few steps okay. the first few mm. actionable steps because if it's not actionable it's going to be hard to focus on it especially mm-hmm. at the beginning of the day even after the first task like some tasks are like that they're like you have to figure them out so having the, the first few actions figured out you know on a day where you're in the right mood and then you already have in your mind like a path to to go where you're going yeah, it's like it's like again it's like you're putting you're offloading stress because you're you're not saying i'm going to commit to this task today i'm going to just research like i'm going to just browse on this i'm going to just start on this task just to, to see where 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 it's getting where where, where, where it's going mm-hmm. but the task is for next week or first for tomorrow or first for whatever so this way again you you're offloading the stress you're just not stressed that you have to finish it today that you have to work on it hard and give it your best today yeah it's it makes sense all right and uh, the last thing I, I want to uh, to want to do is is give you tips uh, on how to be really productive and stay do you know at doing deep work during travel at okay. the nomadic lifestyle as the semi nomadic lifestyle we'll be talking uh, we were talking about recently yeah yeah so uh, the first thing I, I find is that I'm prone to overworking because if I'm traveling. Um, I, you know, I have to move around, you know. Yeah, and you don't see the, 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 the time. Is there's a lot of overhead, right? Yes. Just just moving from one place to another, stuff like that. So I, I'm, I'm, I, I can't keep track of time very well. And so I often tend to just work too much because I feel like I'm not as productive. I have to compensate and I do too much and I feel really bad and I it, it all goes downhill. So don't overwork. That's that's the, the first rule. Uh you know, so set boundaries like that. Uh, and uh, you have to adjust your mindset. So what I find is that I can be just as productive during travel as at home, but I have to adjust the sort of tasks I plan for, for a week when I'm traveling. Because the, the, the hardest tasks, mm-hmm. they're not going to get done. During travel, you, there's just not as much focus to, to be found. The research style tasks are not going to get done. Yeah, right. So uh, it's usually true that I, I have a bunch of tasks that are, are are going to be deep work. They will take the whole day figuring something out, but they're moderately difficult. Like yeah. I know I can do them. I don't have exactly every step figured out, but they're not like head scratcher kind of tasks. Mm-hmm. They're just a sort yeah. of tasks that will spend half a day or a day working on and I'll figure it out. I know I'll figure it out. So... I even even though in theory something would be better to schedule for this week because it's you know it's at the critical path, you know, 
it's probably not that critical for, for this week. It can wait until the next week and I can move the tasks that I would usually do like, you know, in following weeks, I can bring them to this week because I know I won't have as much focus, but I'll ha still have plenty of time. And I, I'll just, in that week, I'll do a bunch of, you know, moderately hard, good work. Mm -hmm. And this way, whether I'm in a cafe, on a bus, on a train, you know, I can have 15 minute chunks of time. And I know that anytime I can just sit down and I can, I don't have to spin up, I can just work. Mm -hmm. And so if I, if I adjust my mindset to that, I can be super productive just on the, this kind of tasks during travel. Yeah, but it's, it's, it, it comes down to, to, I mean, the whole thing, what you're saying today is, is it, it comes down to this one, one thing that we already discussed is by trying harder, mm -hmm. you won't get anywhere. No. So like you have to really plan things and, 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 and take circumstances under, under, under consideration. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you just say, I'm going to just, I'm gonna just try more hard. I'm gonna, like, You'll feel super bad and guilty, and it won't exactly, help anyone. Exactly, and this comes to any type of thing that we do. It's it's like you know, uh, it's it's the the, the, the um, deliberate practice, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like I have to just try harder to throw something. No, I have to just t change technique or whatever. It's like for me swimming. I don't have to just try harder swimming. I just have to change technique or improve technique or study my technique, whatever. And this here, what, what you're saying, the same thing. You're traveling. You're adjusting your 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 expectations. You're adjusting your workload and you're still getting stuff done just different kind of stuff yeah and 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 the last thing to to add to it and i mentioned it uh, two weeks ago uh when we discussed semi-nomadic lifestyle is that you have to set up or try to like pre-plan the right environment for yourself mm -hmm. in the sense that uh if you're going to you know try to optimize so that you don't waste too much time like moving around the city oh, yeah uh and 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 figure out like how to uh, manage your energy levels. So this is this this was my problem uh, mm -hmm. that I, I I wouldn't like I wouldn't figure out that I have to eat regularly during the day even though I'm not at home I don't work at home yeah. so I can't just go to the kitchen and I I have to figure out so that I'm know I'm well fed because otherwise I won't notice that I'm actually hungry I just feel super overwhelmed and tired yeah. right and so for example if I'm you know sleeping on a on a friend's couch and they wake up late yeah. then I I know that you know before I come to, to their place I go to grocery store I get my stuff for uh, for scrambled eggs and whether they wake up at 10 or 11 I'll still wake up at 8 I'll do my breakfast whether they wake up or not and I'm I'm well fed as if I was at home and 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 then I'm in the right spot to start the day or if I'm working from from cafes in uh, in cities where I usually am I, I already have like my places that I know that are good places for work and I do, I know uh, places close to those cafes where I can uh, eat uh, yeah. And you know, quickly uh, get some you know quality uh, meal. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Again, productivity is boring. If you plan it, it's boring. But then again, <laughs> it's not boring because once you do it, you can use all your force, all your mind for creative thing. So um, basically, by by by. by planning as you said planning all these these things uh, planning the tasks planning the week planning everything you offload this the, the decision making mm -hmm. so this way you're you don't again decision fatigue you don't get a decision fatigue because your mind is not thinking what should i do it's like how should i do this mm -hmm. and this is like it, this changes the game yeah and that's it those are my that's my secret sauce of productivity well i'm gonna steal one of the, some of these so uh, yeah I'm I'm sure there there will come a, a point in 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 a year or so where uh, we'll have the version <laughs> two point <f> <laughs> version fifteen of our uh, secret productivity sauce, but uh, I'm I'm really happy that it really is improving. Like, I I, re I really feel the, the the difference in just the last few months. Like the the even though we we keep discussing a bunch of mm -hmm. topics, like in in the topics we discuss every week, you can notice patterns that the, the, there's there's some nice periods where we'll discuss similar things for for a couple of weeks or a couple yeah. of months and then not talk about them for half a year because this is. Yeah, this is what we do. I mean, and, and, and for me, for me, it's the same thing. Like I, I'm, I'm right now improving lots of my productivity system and, and my quarterly reviews and my, 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 my whole strategy. Uh, and I won't be talking about it now because the, right now it's in the process of being created and being and getting feedback. Yeah. But then again, after that, we will be discussing it again because then I will be able to share like the next version. Yeah. All right. So that's it. see you and hear you. And uh, thanks for being around again. Yeah. Cool. Take care, man. 
<laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>